Amalgam Regional Sales Director for Pure Safety Fall Protection, home of the Guardian Fall Protection and Web Devices brands. Today we're going to talk about some of the main points of the new ANSI Z39.1 2016 standard. So to get us started, what did they do? In August of 2016, ANSI officially recognized that the original Z39.1 2007 standard had outgrown itself and issued the Z39.1 2016 update. The original 2007 standard attempted, within a single document, to address materials, manufacturing, testing, and performance standards for full-body harnesses, lanyards, and anchors. The updated standard breaks each of these components and more into individual standards. What is the benefit? It correctly addresses the reality that individual standards change at an individual pace and therefore gives each standard the room to grow without impinging on its neighbor. While it might feel more cumbersome to have separate documents for each standard, it cleans things up by having each standard in its own neat, compact document. ANSI officially changed the designation of Z359.1-2007 from a product standard into a kind of table of contents for the individual product standards that have been created since its inception. It identifies which standard each subsystem of the fall protection system is now governed by and lays out the overall structure of each standard. The goal is, of course, to make these rather dense documents more usable and navigable so that the information is not lost in the weeds, so to speak. To clarify, ANSI has already been using product-specific standards for quite some time, since 2007. The big change here is now that there are individual standards for each product category originally addressed by ANSI, the original standard has slowly become obsolete, so it's evolved in order to maintain its usefulness. Do products marked with the older standard need to be removed from service? Absolutely not. Just because the standard has been updated does not mean products that meet the previous standard are dangerous in any way, shape, or form. Because the .1 2016 standard is now a table of contents, manufacturers may not label products .1 2016 compliant. Products must now be labeled with the proper individual standard instead, and as a result, you may still see some products labeled with the existing Z359.1 2007 standard. As nice as it might be to be able to flip a switch and have all fall protection products industry-wide be compliant with the new individual standard, the fact is it's just not a reality. Making fall protection products takes time, a lot of time. Even when a product is revisited for an update, manufacturers must literally go back to the drawing board and start over. They cannot necessarily rely on a previous design to perform the same once it has changed. Remember, fall protection products are in fact systems that work together. Change one parameter of that system and you have, in effect, changed the entire system. For this reason, ANSI gives manufacturers a grace period from the release of a new standard to make any needed changes and become fully compliant before they must start manufacturing product in accordance with the new standard. Up until this date, the products may be manufactured to the old standard, and ANSI also allows existing inventory on the shelf manufactured prior to the cutoff date to be sold through. Are all Guardian products governed by these ANSI standards? The short answer is no. The longer answer is that for some products, there simply is not an ANSI Z39 standard to govern its material, manufacture, or testing. An example is Guardian's extensive line of guardrail products. At this point, guardrails and their ancillary parts are not mentioned in any ANSI Z39 standard. Does this mean our or any other manufacturer's guardrails are not safe? No. What this means is simply that manufacturers are left to their own methods and materials to ensure their guardrails are compliant with OSHA 1926 and 1910 standards. Remember, ANSI is a non-legally binding standards body that offers guidance for manufacturing and testing products. Compliance with ANSI is voluntary. OSHA compliance, on the other hand, is compulsory. The nuance here is that OSHA relies heavily on consensus standards from organizations such as ANSI to derive their regulations, which is why in the fall protection world, ANSI plays such a prominent role. Ladder safety and safety netting products also fall out of the scope of ANSI Z39 regulations, but like guardrails are bound by performance demands as dictated by OSHA. 
what else do you need to know about Z359.1-2016? Although ANSI.1-2016 doesn't specifically address or add anything regarding third-party testing, or testing in general, it's worth taking a moment to talk about as it's a crucial part of complying with ANSI standards. Product testing is really the backbone of manufacturing and bringing to market high-performance, fall protection products. After all, you can design the nicest looking products on the market, but until it passes the rigorous testing as called out by ANSI in an ISO 17025 accredited lab, it stays on the shelf. As required, Guardian has relied on independent ISO 17025 accredited third-party testing labs for product testing and compliance testing. However, to address the challenges encountered during product development and ANSI compliance, Guardian's test lab has recently been accredited as compliant with the ISO 17025 general requirements for the competence of testing and calibration laboratories. By taking this important step, we're able to expand our testing capabilities for a wider range of products and at the same time have much greater control over testing procedures. This means that not only will test results be available more quickly, it also means shorter development time for products so they are available to the worker much sooner. Also, as new products are released, test results confirming their performance in the lab will be available for download, which as a manufacturer is a key step in maintaining transparency in the product development and testing process. What are the individual standards? ANSI does not make public its entire catalog of standards regarding fall protection products, so the following list is more for reference than anything. The one standard that is available free is the Z359.0 2012 definitions and nomenclature used for fall protection and fall arrest. I would strongly recommend downloading the PDF as it acts as an excellent introduction to some key terms that are found throughout fall protection literature. Again, this is Amy Haugen. Thank you for joining me today, and hopefully this proved to be educational for you. For more information, please visit our website at www.guardianfall.com. Until next time, be safe up there.